on a rooftop above Fallujah. An Iraqi sniper takes careful aim at an ISIS soldier. He slowly tracks his target, and then... This is Fallujah, Iraq. Nearly 300,000 civilians used to live here. Now, it's a ghost town. Some of the most iconic fighting in the American War happened here in 2004. What remains now is a grim and dusty symbol of seemingly endless violence and despair. My name is Ben C. Solomon. That's me in the front seat. I'm a filmmaker and journalist for the New York Times. Behind me is my collaborator and translator, Motez Majid Mohammed. Together, we spent a month this summer embedded with Iraqi fighting forces as they pushed into the city of Fallujah, which had been under ISIS control for the past two years. The frontline mortar team was calm. It was the second morning since fighting began and my first trip to the front line. ISIS fighters are close by, only a few hundred meters away. We weren't sure how well this ragtag unit of the Shia militia, with mismatching uniforms and little organization, could protect us. Motez and I were nervous. Things were quiet. And then suddenly... Gunfire comes in right above our heads. You can hear the zinging of the bullets flying just past. This close fire could mean more attacks around the way. And the militia flies into action. Here we're about four miles outside of Fallujah. Tanks, artillery, personnel carriers, and thousands of men are all coming together. Soon we'll advance into the city itself. In America, people talk of ISIS as a distant menace. But here, in this vast and hot desert, they are an army, and these are the men sent to fight and kill them. War is a lot of downtime. We spend time with fighters, mostly young men, sitting around, waiting for something to happen. But you never know what's coming. That's an outgoing rocket. These fighters are used to it and get a good laugh out of our reaction. <laughs> For weeks we've been stuck on the outskirts of the city. By early June, the ISIS forces are weakened. Civilians stream out of the city. And finally, we roll in. This is central Fallujah. ISIS fighters are just a few blocks away. Artillery, jets, and helicopters are all firing down on them. It's an uneasy place to be. We embed with the Iraqi special forces as they fight street by street. Um,
Now is the most dangerous part of the fight. The ISIS fighters are making their final stand in the neighborhood of Jolan, the same battleground where Americans fought in 2004. It's a common ISIS tactic, leaving behind a group of fighters whose job it is to fight until the death. Over the next few days, the last ISIS fighters are killed or have fled, and the city is retaken. Iraqi fighters are in the streets, posing for eager local TV stations with a captured ISIS flag, held upside down, a sign of disrespect. The city is quiet and eerie. The only signs of life are a few Iraqi soldiers roaming the streets, investigating what the enemy left behind. These are the cells where ISIS would hold their prisoners. Smaller cages like this one are about the same size as a dog crate. The taller ones are high enough that you can stand but too narrow to lie down. There's a thick smell lingering in the air. On the floor, bits of meat for the prisoners were still left out. The brutality of the Iraqi forces was on display as well. On the side of the road there, right under the sun, what appeared to be the body of an ISIS soldier was left in the street. He had been beheaded, his legs were bound, and it looked like he had been dragged by a car. We watched uncomfortably as the Iraqi militia fighters took photos with the body. Iraqi military is in full control. And while the success of the fighting is exciting for many, for the civilians of Fallujah, this is their life now. These are the Fallujah refugee camps, built around 15 miles outside of the city, on the edges of the desert. Nearly 80,000 civilians have come here in the past week. It's nearly 120 degrees each day. There aren't enough tents or containers, so many families must live outside. The wind blows hot sand all around. I have filmed in dozens of refugee camps all over the world, and this was by far the harshest and most unforgiving. These people had lived under a brutal regime for two years. For the last month of it, they were shelled and bombed regularly. Now, even though the conditions were extreme here, most of them were grateful to be alive. This is heaven. There's food. We've been well fed. The dust doesn't bother us. We've lived under the bombs of airplanes and shelling of mortars. God is gracious. For this woman, called Umm Madhir, and her family of eight, they hope to return to Fallujah when it's safe. For others, like Abu Akil, who was lucky enough to get his family moved to a trailer in the camp, he's lived in Fallujah for all of his life, and enough is enough. In the last 30 years, we have never had security. Never. I want to find a place elsewhere, any place. I've rebuilt my house twice, and this is the third time it's destroyed. Why should I go back? The Iraqis have retaken Fallujah, 
but the fighting in Iraq is far from over. Thirteen years after the Americans came here, and five years after their last combat troops pulled out, violence and devastation are everywhere. As we ride past the wreckage and empty streets, it's clear that the future is bleak. This city is just one of many broken pieces in this fractured land.